Hello again, Amateur Winner Able here. I uh, thought I'd just give a follow up video to the uh, series of videos I've just put up about the Primitive Survival course I did uh, the weekend or so back. And just to consolidate my own thinking and what we learned on the course. Uh, these knives here uh, are what I took just to practice with, but uh, I'll just cover them in a minute as to uh, my experience with them. So here's a sheet I've printed out. See here, I think of it focuses. Uh, five C's of survival. I think if you follow any YouTube videos or anything to do with outdoors, I'll talk about this sort of thing. Can be expanded into the ten C's of survival, adding an extra few. And um, also, a uh, guy Jack from Blood Scout Survival has developed his own style called Back Home, Back Home Kit, but it covers similar ideas. So, on the course, we basically covered these ones. We did uh, cutting, so stone tools, um, bone, and you can use shell. Combustion, we tried fire lighting, mostly with the bow drill set, but we also did uh, sparking of flint and steel. Uh, using a bow drill is a lot more difficult than what it first looks. Cover, cover is uh, shelter, those types of things. So we didn't specifically cover uh, cover, shelter, but with um, a cutting tool and cordage, we can start to make shelter, so we sort of mentioned that, but didn't didn't actually make a shelter of some sort. Container, made container from the palm fronds, and um, oh, we, did, oh, we covered a little bit of traps in that as well. So, and so basically, we covered these five C's because if you're out in the bush somewhere and you lose your gear, you've your backpack fell in the river or something, whatever, and you've got just whatever clothes you got in. These things are vitally important, as we discovered on the course, because if you don't have some sort of cutting tool, how are we going to do other things? If you don't have combustion, make a fire, cook food, keep warm, those sort of things, and some sort of shelter, a container. Surprisingly, a container to hold water, boiled water, is quite difficult. And I'm thinking, just got the container here I normally use, which is the metal cup, the old style metal cup. This uh, stove part here, I can either put the sticks in there or whatever I want. The base comes off, so actually I can sit it on the ground if I want to and put in the, um, the uh, little caro stoves. A uh, caro stove I've got here on the table, so I can put that inside. It goes around, so it slides in there. Oh, it doesn't, yep, so it slides in there. Or I can do it that way, sort of thing. But uh, I've been thinking of, now, now I've done the course, upgrading to actual stainless steel water bottle. But this one does a similar thing, so just consolidating what we learned. Uh, the other 10 C's are candlelight, so some sort of light torch. So here I've got a headlamp, I had this one for a while. It shows red light as well as, oh, red, green and blue, as well as your white light. Or you can just have a little torch, flashlight, as they say. So... That sort of thing, so candlelight, cloth bantana, so you can use for like a hat, filtering uh, water or various things, compass, if uh, cargo tape and canvas needle is what's well, considered some, something important for some extra seas if you're trying to survive in the field. I'll just cover these ones here from Jack, Black Sea Survival. See a blaze and burn, burn includes having a little bit of tinder in your pocket as well. So that is up here, combustion, the same. All weather blanket, so that's uh, covers cover, so it's shelter as well as like a thermal blanket, keep you warm, that sort of thing. Cordage, of course, the same cordage. Knife, cutting tool, same, really need a cutting tool. Headlamp, comes under candling, candlelight. A metal canteen, so I just showed a metal pot, canteen of some sort. And here's emergency signalling in there, so some sort of strobe light or something. So it, it does cover similar things. And as the course pointed out, if you don't really have these basic things, either you've lost them or you're really struggling to try and make things to keep you going. So that's the idea of having a, um, a survival tin as well. I've just grabbed a little survival tin, so I think everyone knows what they are. Hey, back again, because I grabbed a couple of them here. I've got... Um, this uh, like Altoids tin, but this is a CRKT tin. Comes with a little knife. 
a Doug Ritter knife and a little mini Bic lighter in there. So I could add a little bit of tinder and um, a little bit of cordage maybe just to a really really basic and this easily fits in a pocket, shirt pocket, something like that. To go a bit bigger in size uh, some sort of survival type thing. I've showed this before in the video. This isn't overly big, still fit in my pocket okay. It's got a lot more stuff and is, is quite a it's quite a good kit. So if you've lost your backpack, you're really struggling, at least this gives you something to start. I've got a little knife in there, a candling, uh, a little mini fire steel, some uh, fishing gear, that sort of thing. And then of course it can go a little bit bigger as well, so get this one. But um, on these kits here I was looking at, it doesn't cover anything in the way of first aid, so no band-aids or plasters, no sort of um, Panadol pain relief type thing, something like that. And doesn't give you some basic in the way of what this one had here, a little bit of fishing line. So obviously the kits get bigger and bigger and add more stuff and then got more. But the really basics covered on the course you really need are these couple here. Cordage. I did show how you can make fishing a, a fishing rod, fishing line as part of trapping and cordage as well. So really need these things. So cutting, combiner combustion and you can have that covered It'll really have a little basic survival tin like this one or maybe a little bit bigger a plastic waterproof type case still fits in your pocket this one here is a bit bigger and would fit in a pouch that it would go on your belt be quite good that way so just to cover the knives I took with me just for fun to see how they worked had me a little WM1 great little knife uh, it's got the cordage set up as a neck knife, I just keep it tight on the end there. Very sharp, very lightweight, slim, slim design, slim sheath, and I just carry it in my pocket. So it's always there. I did have a little folder as well, I had a little rat 2 folder as well. So I got some backup cutting, so this one's handy. I had the, this is a Shrade 55, Brian Griffin design. Really great knife. Uh, robust, thick. Can do a little bit of battening when we're uh, preparing some wood there. I can put it in and batten down with no trouble at all. More than sharp enough. The handle, surprisingly, even though it's smooth, hands are wet a little bit in the rain, gave good grip because of the way it's scalloped here. And a little bit uh, wider at the back. Good grip, held on. Great knife, especially for the price. Well worth getting one of these. And the Shrade 42 as well, if you want a little bit bigger knife. Really great knives. Uh, Brian Griffin's got a write-up on the knife forums, USA, um, whatever the knife forum is. It explains why it's designed in this way and that sort of thing. So it actually has a little bit of a military background to it as well. Of course I took an F1 with me, great knife. This one's a COS steel, great knife. Uh, one of the other students there borrowed the knife, was using it as well. So it got a bit of a workout and it used its real, it lost its real sharpness but I just touched it up on the ceramic rod when I got home and a bit of stropping and it's back to being sharp as anything so by all means if your budget extends out to this by all means uh, consider an F1 if the size knife I took my own homemade knife with me just to give it a try it worked really well, really happy with this knife and the fact that I put the handles on and ground it and that sort of thing it's a great little knife to have Decided to take this Cerberus knife along. Um, just something about the shape of it that interests me. Worked well, of course. Handle works well. It's quite smooth here, and a couple of times I thought with the wet hands and that it was a bit too slippery, but the shape of the handle gives you good grip. Uh, when it comes to battening wood, the full flat grind wasn't quite as good. Battening wood is the A1 because of the, of the Sabre grind. The big wedge here, you just wedge down in it and gets into wood no trouble when you're splitting some smaller trees and, and to process some wood so by all means uh, an A1 if you can the budget stretch to that for a larger knife it's the way to go and of course in my backpack I always have a mora I've got a couple of moras keep them in the pack my big pack my small pack and uh, they're just quite cheap light you hardly notice they're in the bag versatile if that's all you had in the bush uh, it would be quite okay for most circumstances so there we go I just sort of give a bit of a summary of the course and the importance of these five C's in particular having a few extra ones 
is good. But um, yeah, to build a survival, what people talk about having a survival kit and those sorts of things when you're in the bush because you just never know when you might get stuck in an emergency, that sort of thing. So, adding a first aid kit, I just got the one on the table here I was using. This one's obviously a bit bigger, a bit more things in. But some basic band aids and a few things, a bandage. And depending where you're into, you might want a snake bite kit, something like that. So, you really need to consider this when if you're going in the field uh, fairly often. So, that's it. Uh, MH1 Enable, thanks for watching. Remember, stay ready, stay prepared, stay alert, particularly in these crazy times we live. Bye bye for now.